William McKinley, our 25th President of the United States, may not be one of the most well-known presidents, uh, but he certainly was able to accomplish some things that uh, are in place today thanks to his efforts. Uh, he was a very devoted husband, and that's one of the things that historians uh, write most about William McKinley, his devotion to his wife, Ida, who was suffering from health problems. He was also part of uh, getting the International Court of Arbitration at The Hague together, and he began plans for the Panama Canal. Uh, sadly, though, he would not be able to see some of these projects through to completion due to his assassination in 1901. Canton, Ohio's favorite son, William McKinley, was our 25th President of the United States. Uh, he is our favorite son, but he was not born here in Canton. William McKinley was born on January 29, 1843 in Niles, Ohio. He was the seventh oldest of nine children born to William McKinley Sr. and Nancy Allison McKinley. They lived in Niles until William was about 10 years old, at which point they moved to Poland, Ohio, about 10 miles away. And the reason was the education system was a little bit better in Poland than it was in Niles. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. McKinley wanted the best possible education for all of their children that they could provide. So young William attended the Poland Academy until he was 16 years old. He enjoyed debate along with ice skating and horseback riding. And uh, he graduated when he was about 16 years old and then went off to Allegheny College in Meadville, Pennsylvania. He was there just about one term when a combination of financial problems and poor health forced him to return to Poland and there he worked several different jobs. He worked in the post office, he was a Sunday school teacher, and he taught school in a one-room schoolhouse. Now by this point, William was 18 years old and the year was 1861, and that was the same year that the Civil War broke out. And he and along with some of his friends joined the 23rd Ohio Volunteer Infantry and went off and fought on the side of the North. He did serve for four years, the entire duration of the Civil War. He went up through the ranks rather quickly and spent most of his time as a commissary sergeant, ensuring that food and supplies and drinks got to the frontline troops. He was discharged from the Army in 1865 after the war ended, and then that summer he went to Albany, New York and attended the Albany Law School. He spent two years there earning his law degree, and in 1867 was admitted to the Ohio Bar, and that was the same year that he moved to Canton. And he came to Canton at the urging of two of his sisters, Anna and Helen McKinley, both very well respected school teachers in town, and they came, uh, William came here uh, because there were a lot of opportunities for a young lawyer at that time. He met Judge George Belden and they formed a partnership, and in 1869 he was elected Stark County Prosecutor. Now shortly after moving here, he met Ida Saxton, who was the granddaughter of John Saxton, founder of the repository, and the daughter of James Saxton, who owned a bank in town. And Ida was working at her father's bank when she met William. And they courted, they would see each other on their way to, uh, to church on Sundays, and uh, eventually they got married on January 25th, 1871, in the newly constructed Presbyterian Church in downtown Canton. About 11 months later, they had their first daughter, a little girl named Catherine. She was born on Christmas Day of 1871. Two years later, in 1873, they had another daughter named Ida, named for her mom. Sadly, though, both of the children would die at a very, very young age. Baby Ida died when she was not quite five months old, and then unfortunately, Catherine died at the age of three and a half. Now, despite the personal tragedies, professionally, William McKinley went on to serve as Stark County Prosecutor. He was Congressman for Ohio, a role he served for 14 years. He was elected Governor of Ohio, and in 1896, with a successful front porch campaign held right in Canton, Ohio, he was elected our 25th President. Uh, he served until 1900, and he was re-elected again. And unfortunately, he only served a few months of his second term when on September 6 of 1901, he was attending the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo, New York. He was inside the Temple of Music shaking hands with the public when a young anarchist named Leon Zolgosh approached the president. 
Leon had a bandage wrapped around his right hand. That bandage was concealing a small 32 caliber pistol. When the president reached out to shake hands, Leon fired two shots. One shot went into the president's shoulder and another entered the president's stomach. They quickly rushed President McKinley to a nearby emergency uh, hospital on the fairgrounds, performed surgery on him, got out the bullet in the shoulder, but they were not able to locate the bullet in the stomach. And unfortunately, that stomach wound developed gangrene, and the president died on September 14, 1901, eight days after he was shot. Now, following a brief service for the president in Buffalo, New York, the casket was loaded on board a train and taken to Washington, D.C., where he lay in state. And then on September 18th, there was one final trip back to Canton. The uh, train arrived at the train station on September 18th of 1901. The casket was taken to the uh, Stark County Courthouse, where the people of Northeast Ohio had their opportunity to pay their final respects. On September 19th of 1901, the funeral services were held at the Church of the Savior, which was the President's Church. And then after those services, the casket was placed in the Wirtz Receiving Vault. And that day, on the 19th of September, uh, some of the President's friends and closest advisors, they started talking about plans to build the McKinley National Memorial. Now, Mrs. McKinley came to visit her husband just about every day at the receiving vault, and sadly, she passed away at the end of May of 1907 from a stroke and was not able to see the monument fully completed and dedicated. The monument was dedicated on September 30th, 1907, and about 10 days later, on October 10th of 1907, the President's casket, Mrs. McKinley's casket, and the remains of the two daughters were moved from West Lawn Cemetery and placed up into the monument where they remain today. And that monument serves as a beautiful tribute uh, to the 25th President of the United States and one of Canton, Ohio's favorite sons.